Hello everyone, I am Mr. Boudot. Today let's look at constructing line plots in Excel and performing a break-even analysis. A company called EFS Corporation manufactures and sells beach balls. The fixed setup cost to manufacture these balls is $500 with a variable cost for raw materials and labor at $4 per ball. EFS Corporation earns a revenue of $8 per ball sold. We can express these values mathematically with the cost function and revenue function. Now, what is the break-even point for EFSC's production process? Break-even is defined as the production level resulting in zero profit. In other words, total revenue equals total cost, or profit equals revenue minus cost. So at the break-even point for EFSC, our profit equals zero dollars, that equals our revenue of 8 times the quantity minus the cost component of $500 fixed cost plus a variable cost of $4 times the production quantity. Now, let's go to Excel and look at this problem graphically and algebraically. Here in Excel, I've typed in the cost and revenue functions. Let's go ahead and plot these values in a scatter plot using Excel. I'm using Excel version 2016. If you have downloaded the Microsoft Office 365 suite, you will see the same screens and menus that I'm showing. If you have an older PC or Mac and are using an older version of Excel, you could have slightly different menus in the taskbar, but all of the functionality should be the same. If it isn't, please download the Microsoft Office 365 suite. It's free and it's very extensive. Let's start our plot by constructing a scatter plot of ordered pairs. An ordered pair has an X value and a Y value. So our X values are going to be units. We can put in any values that are feasible for a production quantity. Let's say 0 units, 100, 200, 300, and so forth. That should be enough. Our cost is a function based on the number of units. So we type that in Excel in a functional form. To tell Excel that we're working with a function, you have to start with an equal sign. So it's equal 500, our fixed component, plus 4 times the number of units produced. Number of units is given in column A, so for this first cost associated with zero units, that's in cell A7. So if we produce zero units, our cost will be $500. Now, we can type that same formula into the next cell, or we can do a copy and paste. So you can right-click on your mouse and do copy, and then go to the next cell, right-click again, and do paste, and you'll see that the formula changes to 500 plus 4 times the next cell, which is A8. You can do that for the number of cells there. We can do a copy and paste for several cells as well. Now, once we have the ordered pairs to define a plot or a graph of a line, we can then draw an image of this scatter plot very easily in Excel. Select all of the values in the table, both the column headings and all the values. Go to Insert, and under Charts, you should have a scatter plot icon. Click on that. We can generate a scatter plot of points. We can just as easily generate a scatter plot of a line. Let's use the scatter plot of a line. It's always good to have a legend on your charts to tell the reader what this line represents. So click on the plus sign. Let's add a legend. So now we have the cost. But graphing just the cost component is only part of what we need. We also need the revenue component. There are two lines on the graph and we're looking for the intersection point of cost and revenue. That will define our break-even point. 
So let's add revenue to this as well. Again, it's a function, so we need the equal sign. This equals 8 times cell A7. So if we produce zero units, we have nothing to sell, and our revenue is zero dollars. We can copy and paste this revenue formula down in the subsequent rows, or a very quick way to do that is to grab this little square in the lower right-hand corner by left-clicking on the square and just dragging the box down, and it will fill all the adjacent cells in each row with those formulas. For example, if we manufacture 500 units and sell them, we will generate revenue of 8 times the value in cell A12, 8 times 500, which is $4,000. Now, let's graph the units on the x-axis with two values on the y-axis, cost and revenue, together. We'll delete that chart. Now select all of these. If you position cost and revenue both adjacent to the value of units, then Excel will automatically assign units to the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, and the subsequent columns to the y-axis, or the vertical axis. Now, we're going to be plotting lines. To plot lines in Excel, your number of units has to be in ascending order. If we're just plotting a scatter plot of points, these units could be in any order at all. But in order to have the lines plot in Excel accurately, we need to have ascending order, as we have here. So now again, we'll insert a scatter plot. Our plot will be a line chart. And you can see our graph here now plots both lines, cost and revenue, together. Well, we can add a nice chart title here. Click on Chart Title, and you can edit this box. Let's make it EFS Corp. Break Even. Let's look a little closer at this plot. We see the intersection point of the cost and the revenue lines. It occurs at a quantity of somewhere around 120 units. That is the break-even point. That is where cost exactly equals revenue. From this break-even point, all of the production quantities, or numbers of units, greater than the break-even point will result in a profit. You can see that the revenue line is higher than the cost line, so we have a profit. All of the points to the left of the break-even point will generate a negative profit or a loss. Here the cost is higher than the revenue. What if we were to produce some quantity of units, any quantity given, can we calculate the profit that should be obtained for that production quantity? So let's start with this question here. What is EFSC's profit at 300 units? We know that profit equals revenue minus cost. So if we just insert the values that we know into the equation, profit equals 8 times our quantity, which is 300, minus 500 plus 4 times our quantity of 300. Solve that function for profit, and you end up with profit equals $700. So we earn a profit of $700, at a production of 300 units. And that's plotted at about here on the line. Here's the 300 units. You'll see that we have a cost of 1700 and a revenue of 2400 That difference is our profit of $700. Now our next question, what is EFSC's break-even quantity? We know that it's around 120. We can see that from the graph. But what value is it exactly? Let's calculate it. Again, we know that profit equals revenue minus cost, just as we had before. But now, by definition, at the break-even point, we have zero profit. So now we know the profit value, but we need to solve for the quantity. That's x. So zero equals 8x minus 500 plus 4x. Those are our revenue and cost functions. Solving that function for x, 
gives us 125 units. At exactly 125 units, EFSC will generate zero profit. Okay, we solved both graphically and algebraically for break-even point, and we found that the break-even point is 125 units. But here's a real-world question. What if EFSC receives an order for only 100 beach balls? Remember, their break-even point is 125. So if they receive an order for just 100 beach balls, they produce and fill the order, they will generate a loss. No company wants to lose money. So if EFSC has the flexibility to adjust its price, at what price must EFSC charge to break even? Let's go to pencil and paper and find out. What do we know? We know that the cost is equal to that function we've worked with and revenue equals price times quantity. We also know that profit equals revenue minus cost. Now let's fill in these formulas with the values that we know. So if profit equals zero dollars at the break-even point and our quantity is 100 units, then we have all the values we need except for price. That's what we need to solve for. So our profit of zero dollars is equal to price times 100, that's our revenue function, minus our cost function of 500 plus 4 times 100 units. Solving that formula for price gives us a price of $9. Therefore, if EFSC can sell 100 beach balls for at least $9, then it will not sustain a loss on that contract. Similarly, we can solve for fixed cost, variable cost, any components we want in this set of equations in order to develop alternative break-even points for different quantities, different prices, different costs, and so forth. Thank you.